afternoon, boys and ghouls, and welcome to another spooky, scary theater with your host, Count Gary von Bauten. Blah, blah, and welcome. You want to see something very scary? <laughs> okay, this isn't working. Hi, I'm Gary Bauten. This is Zara Zone TV. And this month, we're going to take a look at the second installment of Page Layout, Typography. Yes, Typography. How to make words and graphics work together on a page with equal importance to both. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to use it in Zara. In addition to the template that you'll be using this month, I need you to go out to the web and get a couple of free typefaces. The first of them was created by Dieter Stiefman, and it's called Morris Initials, and uh, I want you to download and install that because we're going to use that for a drop cap in a tutorial later in this video. Now, the other font you might or might not have, this is called Ben Guat. There's an awful lot of lookalike typefaces on the web that you can go if you do a search for Ben Guat lookalikes. Um, I want to use this for both body copy and headline in this tutorial and uh, if you don't have it and don't have access to it and don't find it there's another URL on the page that you clicked uh, called Pixie and uh, I want you to download and install that if you don't have Ben Guat or a typeface like Ben Guat. Now I'd like you to open two page spread with safety.zar in Zara. Once you have that open I want you to import dubious Guide RTF, click Merge, click Don't Match for Color, and with the Selector tool, move it onto the page. You notice it has its own margin. Click All Text Areas when you do move the text. And as you can see, this text flowed into the next page. What I want you to do is uh, move that margin out on the first page so you have one column. Now, we'd like this to be a two column layout, so what I want you to do is to right click and choose Columns and then choose two. And the neat thing is that Zara will automatically flow the text into two columns. If we're gonna be uh, adding text and uh, doing funny graphics things, what I'd like you to do is to uh, create your own uh, margin here. And once you have those, um, I think we're all set to uh, do some fun stuff with this. Now, one of the first things we want to do is we want to get the headline out of the body copy. So I highlighted it and clicked uh, Cut, created a new paragraph block. And now that we have that, I think what we need to do is to uh, center it and increase its size. Now, I'm eyeballing this, um, perhaps 28 points, 24 points would uh, work best. I'm moving that down to align with the opposite page. And once we have that, I want you to move down the two columns. There we go. And as you can see, we have, uh, well, we had uh, an orphan text, but as long as we've got about three lines there, we can move down the headline and it's basically centered. And uh, that's not bad, but I think we can do better. So what I'm going to do now, and what I want you to do, is to take that text, cut it, and drag a paragraph block using the text tool, paste it, and uh, there's some overflow there that you can't see, so let's pull down on the uh, box. A uh, dubious guide to the origin of phrases. Uh, choose that you're moving text only, and select it only for the other column. Now, that doesn't look too good. Let's align it right, just to be a little designy here. And what we have now is something that is readable, we're getting away from the uh, the boring two-column, what we used to call tombstone layout, um, and uh, there just isn't enough room on this page for three columns. But as you can see here, you have a nicely designed headline, and now it's time to take a look at the paragraphs themselves.
Now, with paragraphs, one of the conventional rules is is that you can put a space between paragraphs or lose that space and just indent every paragraph. Uh, to indent, what you do is you uh, put your cursor at the beginning of a paragraph and uh, push tab. Now, that tab itself is set in Zara up on the uh, tab line. And the tab itself is set above the text, as you can see. What I'm going to do now is highlight everything and then click a tab line. And there's a really nice guide there. So now that we have that tab set, what you simply do is uh, insert your cursor at the beginning of a uh, paragraph and uh, click tab. And I know this is a little tedious to watch, but what we're going to do is to go up to the text toolbar and use zero as space after paragraph. So if we put our uh, cursor at the beginning of a new paragraph uh, and press backspace, we've just lost all the uh, spaces that were in the RTF file. Now, if we go to uh, the guides in the page and layout and uh, hide the guidelines, then what you will see is the layout uh, clean and you can better evaluate. Now, um, I don't think in this uh, layout that the uh, tabs are cutting it. So what I think we want to do is select all and uh, go to the spacing uh, between paragraphs. And that's up here. I'm getting rid of the uh, indents and I want you to do that too before we do anything. And then, as I said, uh, once you have everything selected, what I want you to do is to go up to the uh, text toolbar and let's put 12 points in there. The text uh, currently is uh, 10 points. And by the way, you can usually tell when a column is long enough when it's got 9 to 12 words in it. If they're any shorter, um, the reader is going to whiplash while they're reading, you know, three or four words per line. So just to confuse you, we're moving on and I've indented the uh, first lines again. And I want to show you what it looks like for a headline. To put a graphic right next to the headline, this is an artistic treatment. You can use it in an awful lot of ads and this particularly um, offsets the innate boringness of having a um, tombstone page. Now, uh, what I've done is I've got a graphic of question marks, which is appropriate for the uh, dubious guide to the origin of phrases, because no one really knows. Let's highlight the headline and left align it. Let's take the uh, guides off and see what that looks like. Let's uh, zoom out. And uh, here, what we have is a very nice breakup of the uh, two columns with the headline. Now I'm going to uh, show you another way to uh, add graphics and have it work with text. Now this joker, um, you can actually see this in my gallery on Talk Graphics. What I want you to do is I want you to uh, use Repel uh, from right clicking on that graphic because it's on top of everything as you can see the text has moved around very nicely around the graphic now I'm going to zoom in and control click on that shadow piece and uh, Cut it and this looks better, but I want to click on uh, a new entry called text repelling and anchoring This is new to version 10. I believe that the default of uh, 05 inches isn't as good as 0.1 inch so uh, I did that, and I think if we look around, that's a little better um, offset for the embedded graphic. Now, what you're going to get an awful lot of times when you embed a, a graphic with offset is uh, our lines that just don't look right. Uh, there's not enough spacing, and this is what happens with force justification. So what you do with a line such as this, it's only got three words on it and an awful lot of space in between, is to uh, increase the uh, inter-character spacing that we have here. We've increased the tracking or kerning, and because this text is force justified, now there are uh, fewer rivers and at full page size, the text looks more refined and easier to read. Now I'm gonna show you how to create a drop cap next, and this includes the uh, Morris initials. 
that you downloaded and installed earlier as a font. Now what I'm going to do is uh, take the first character, the M, off of the first paragraph and uh, put it over here and assign it the uh, Morris Initials font from the font drop-down. And uh, I think uh, four, perhaps five characters in height. Now I'm going to show you a very important trick. I'm going to put a rectangle uh, behind this character because if you use something like an A um, or uh, other character that isn't perfectly vertical on one side, uh, your text that you're going to be repelling won't repel perfectly and um, it's going to look amateurish. So let's do a repel under and dynamically that's moving down now one two three four lines that looks pretty good and if I move it up just a tinch I think we've got uh, a good layout now let's take the uh, guides and make them invisible and the next thing we're gonna try which also means repelling, is making a call-out quote. Now, a call-out quote, you look in your text for an interesting, provocative uh, sentence, like, um, oh, let's look down here. There was nothing to stop things from falling. Uh, let's highlight that and copy it out of the paragraph text. And what we're going to do is to make that text a little bit larger. Now, let's copy that. And we're going to repel the paragraph text using a quote. Now I've copied that and I'm going to create another uh, paragraph block here. Now let's increase the size of this quote. Let's choose um, 18. Now let's increase the size of this quote. 18 points seems to play nicely. Let's italicize it and put quotes around it because this after all is a call out quote. It's quoting the text in the article. And uh, let's fudge around a little bit with the uh, width and height. This isn't bad. It could be a little bit wider. But we have four lines now. And I'm going to put a rectangle, a white rectangle, which matches the uh, paper color. Behind, Control-Shift-B, you want to press. Select both and then group them. And okay, we're going to uh, take the call quote, move it down into the text, and we're going to uh, repel the text. So we want to right click and choose that. And the result is a uh, graphic made out of text within the body of the article. Now, ideally, a call out quote should really go um, on a two page spread. The left page I deliberately made taken so we could concentrate on just one page. A call out quote is just a nice graphical element using typography. It's quite modern, it's quite stylish. I hope you have fun using all of these tricks that I've showed you. And I'm going to show you uh, some more stuff next month at 